before we get started with this video, I now sell merchandise. So if you're interested in buying a t-shirt or a mug, I have a link to my store in the description. I really appreciate anybody that purchases any one of my products. How y'all doing today? It's your boy Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs back with another video. And as you can see, we're going to be talking about the Swiss chocolate gene and hog nose snakes as well as its morph combinations. So let's get started. So first, uh, the Swiss chocolate gene was discovered by Jules Tote over in Switzerland. And he was kind enough to let me use his pictures for this PowerPoint. So all the pictures that you're going to be seeing are from his animals. And I asked him a couple years ago how he discovered the Swiss chocolate gene. He said that he went to a local pet store, bought a pair of hognose snakes, bred them together, and out came a Swiss chocolate. So he got pretty lucky um, with that one. And he's done a really good job of marketing this gene. And it's probably the most popular recessive gene right now, especially the genes that have just come out. And uh, they're now pretty readily available in the United States if you have the money for them. So let's get started. The Swiss chocolate gene is a recessive trait, and I would consider it a melanistic gene. So it increases the darker pigmentations in a hognose snakes, um, but they have a lot of variety. One thing I've, I've pretty much um, come to realize is that a lot of Swiss chocolates have a very dark head, but in terms of the color of their body, it kind of just depends on an individual animal. Some have more brown, some have more blacks, and then some even have some yellows um, going down uh, the rest of their body. So it's a lot of variety, as you can see in this next slide. All these are uh, Swiss chocolates, so you have some yellows, some browns, some blacks, and even some greens. But you can kind of see most of them have that really dark head. So now let's get into some combinations. So we're gonna start off with the incomplete dominant genes like I always do. And I wanna make um, a correction on my previous videos where I talk about the anaconda gene. So I talked to Brent Bumgardner, the guy that discovered the anaconda gene. And he corrected me on, um, on basically uh, what I've been saying. So um, the term conda shouldn't really exist. So it's either anaconda when we're talking about the heterozygous version and then the homozygous version or the super um, version is called superconda as one word. So the, the regular version, it shouldn't be called conda, it should be called anaconda. And then the super form should be superconda with one word. So as you can see on this picture, the left hand side, we have the Swiss chocolate anaconda. Um, the anaconda gene just reduces the pattern and then the superconda form completely removes the pattern. Now we, when we combine the arctic gene, as you can see we have arctic swiss chocolates, arctic swiss chocolate anaconda, and then the arctic swiss chocolate superconda. So the arctic gene basically lightens the background up some and then uh, it usually makes the saddle stand out more. Um, but with this really dark gene as a Swiss chocolate, you really can't see the dark outline too much in the saddles. And then you have the super arctic version of the Swiss chocolate. So we have on the left hand side just a regular super arctic Swiss chocolate. It looks like it's had its second shed. And then on the right hand side, you have the super arctic super kind of Swiss chocolate. So a very dark snake. Uh, super arctics usually come out really dark out of the egg. And so when you add a melanistic gene to it, it's going to be even darker. Um, I wasn't able to find any pictures of this animal after its second shed to see how it lightened up. Because um, usually a regular super arctic is going to lighten up after the second shed. So I'm really curious to see what it does with the Swiss chocolate gene attached to it. So now let's talk about the Swiss chocolate combined with other recessive genes. The first recessive gene we're gonna talk about is the lavender. And here's what that looked like, the Swiss chocolate lavender. So both of these pictures, I'm not sure, they may be the same animal. Um, one as a baby on the left-hand side and one when it's a little older. As you can see, the Swiss chocolate gene, it, it looks like it enhances other recessive genes, such as the sable. Because Swiss chocolate is very similar to sable. So you have a really nice, rich purple snake. So it seems like the Swiss chocolate is bringing out some of that lavender color. The next combination we're going to talk about is the Swiss chocolate combined with albino. 
and uh, that's termed the tangerine. So the sable version is called the sunburst. So we have the Swiss albino, Swiss albino anaconda, and the Swiss albino superconda. So like I say, very similar to the sunburst, but it seemed like you get a, a richer and darker orange color. Next up, we gonna add the Arctic gene to it. So we have the Swiss chocolate Arctic albino on the left hand side and the Swiss chocolate Arctic albino anaconda. Yeah, the anaconda version is really cool looking. Um, you can see it's a lot more yellow, which is pretty cool. All right, the next morph combination is adding exanthic to it. So exanthic removes those yellows, reds, and oranges from the snake. And when you combine it with sable, you usually hatch out a bluish baby hog nose. But this is what it looks like when you add it to Swiss chocolate. So on the left-hand side, you actually have two Swiss chocolate exanthics. One is very dark, and then one is a very light color. So you have a lot of variety. And then on the right-hand side, you have the Swiss chocolate exanthic anaconda and this is you can see kind of the bluish hue in the background so it's pretty cool looking at these three hognose snakes they all have the same genetics but look at the variety that you get based on the the base color of the swiss chocolate so that's that's very interesting to me especially the, the picture on the left hand side all right, the next morph combination, we're gonna have Swiss chocolate and toffee belly. And then we have Swiss chocolate toffee bellies right here. So we have the, the regular version, we have the anaconda version in the middle, and then we have the superconda version on the right-hand side. So very similar to the Mod Ties, but like I said, it seems like the Swiss chocolate gives a more richer, darker orange color compared to Sable. And so now we're going to show you um, a couple uh, Swiss chocolate three gene morph combinations in terms of recessive genes. So we have the Swiss chocolate when you combine the toffee gene and the albino gene. And you get the Swiss chocolate toffee glow. So toffee glows is a visual albino toffee. So you can see these two guys. Pretty cool. And next up, we have the Swiss chocolate when you combine the exanthic and the albino. So exanthic albino gives you snow. So let's see what it looks like when you combine a snow and you add that Swiss chocolate gene to it. So you get this guy right here, uh, the Swiss chocolate snow. So this is a hatchling. Um, it looks like a it looks like it doesn't even have any pattern at all. It, it kind of reminds me of the snowburst. Um, look, it looks like it doesn't have any head stem, kind of like a, a leucistic almost. Um, so I'm pretty curious to see what this is going to look like. I don't even think it's a superconda um, from what I've read in the comments. So I'm pretty interested to see what this animal is going to look like as it develops after like the second and third shed. Will some of that pattern start coming about, um, especially in the head area? So yeah, that's a pretty interesting thing, the Swiss chocolate snow. And so those are going to be all the morph combinations that have been produced so far that I know of in terms of the Swiss chocolate gene. This last slide I want to show you is just some cool pictures of uh, snakes that I saw on Jules' Facebook page that I wasn't quite sure um, the genetics behind them. They all look like super arctics. I'm not so sure. I'm pretty sure the ones on the left hand side are super arctic exantics. But the reason why I want to highlight this is because of the paradoxing. Um, he actually has quite a few pictures of paradox snakes, so I'm not sure if the Swiss chocolate gene, um, if that increases the rate of paradoxing, such as the toffee gene, but I thought these animals were pretty cool. Um, so added that to the slide. And so the Swiss chocolate gene, like I said, is a relatively new recessive morph. Is This year has become more readily available, especially in the United States, if you have the money. And as you can see, this was a pretty short PowerPoint. It's not many morph combinations that haven't been done. So if you want to embark on a new project, you have the money, and you may want to produce a world's first one day, 
definitely invest in the Swiss chocolate gene. It's definitely a recessive gene that's going to be around for a long time. So I appreciate y'all for watching yet another one of these more videos, and I'll see y'all for the next one. Peace out. And I now have a Patreon account for those who want to support me even further. Here you will have access to exclusive videos, giveaways, as well as discounts. The link will be in the bottom in the description. And if you purchase Repi links, feel free to use the discount code SHOVELHOGS to receive 5% off of all purchases.